Good evening, Reston. Welcome to Reston Impact. I'm your host, uh, John Lovis, and you'll have to pardon me if I look sad, perhaps a bit confused. It's because I'm still wondering about what happened uh, in midterm elections. Progressives and, and Democrats in general took a beating that will take some time to recover from. As I speak, I realize I may not live to see our U.S. Our US Congress again led by the party of the people. Knuckle-draggers now have a huge majority in what was the People's House, and the U.S. Senate is now under corporate and Neanderthal rule. Democrats took a beating they deserved. Once again, unable to deliver a clear message defining our policy principles to the American people. There is a terrible melee, malaise affecting too many millions of Americans these days. Our people are dispirited. They've seen their incomes fall, jobs lost, replaced by lower paying ones in too many cases, if replaced at all. While a minority of wealthy citizens have reaped huge new wealth, a lot from bonds and real estate, other things that are investments, but not investments in, in so-called job creation. The facts show that uh, the wealthy who are making so much money whose incomes have risen dramatically since 2008, 2009, when the rest of us were having a bit of, bit of difficulty, shall we say, only 1% of what they take in was invested in any kind of job creation. The latter group, however, was incredibly energized for these elections and for the need to maintain the status quo as they see it. And we live in a troubled world overseas. People are unhappy and deservedly so. Conservatives blamed it all on Obama's party while offering no solutions beyond tax cuts for themselves. Where do we go next? But I digress. I digress. For tonight we have a show about good things and people who do good things for you and something you can join and be a member of and, and profit from. Uh, tonight we're going to talk about credit unions. The member-owned, democratically run financial institutions now serving nearly 100 million Americans and perhaps serving them far better than private banks. Credit unions are relatively new, first established at the federal level in this country in 1934 under Franklin Delano Roosevelt. You may have heard of him. But let's talk with some leaders of the credit union movement from our, our region, people who know far more about this subject uh, than I do. Uh, and let's, we can learn some things from them, I think. My guests tonight are Ms. Gigi Highland. Gigi is the executive director of the National Credit Union Foundation. Mm -hmm. uh, there are a lot of uh, acronyms I'm still getting into here and formerly one of three board members of the NCUA, National Credit Union Administration. Correct. Uh, which is the body that regulates all federal credit unions. She was one of three presidential appointees on that board. Next to her is Mrs. Ms. Patty Briata. Is Brietta. that more or less? Mm -hmm. Briata, okay. Uh, she's the public relations director of the National Association of federal credit unions. That's correct. Another, and everything that ends in CU, that's credit <laughs> Just remember that part of it. Um, and Mario Mejia, fellow down here on the right, he is the business development officer of the Department of Interior Federal Credit Union and the instigator of this program. <laughs> Welcome to you all. Thanks for coming out. Thanks to so us. much, Thank John. You. Thank you. It's good to have you. Um, let's talk just a, a little bit about yourselves and sort of get this, the setting of what credit unions are. Uh, Gigi, I wonder if uh, you could just tell us where were you born and what took you to, what got you interested in credit unions and becoming a leader in the credit union movement? Sure, um, thanks John, it's great to be here with you. Uh, so I was actually born in Wiesbaden, Germany. My dad uh -huh. was on active duty for the Air Force as a JAG officer and uh, came and back. Who is your dad, by the way? Uh, my dad is Jerry Highland, who's the Mount Vernon supervisor for Fairfax County, ah, Virginia. Okay. Very proud of him. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> and, you know, credit unions uh, a little bit are in my blood because uh, both my mom and dad uh, were attorneys and they represented credit unions here in the metropolitan D.C. area. And, you know, like any good kid, when I went to law school, I swore, you know, I wasn't going to do the same thing. But, of course, you know, fate has a way of pushing you in that direction, and it's been an amazing career. Um, you know, credit unions are not-for-profit financial cooperatives 
whose sole mission really is to serve their members. And so as an attorney, helping credit unions do that, helping credit unions find the best way so to serve attorney, their members. An attorney. I am, I'm an attorney. Don't it's hold to, that against me. No, it, it's so. good to admit that. <laughs> I, right up front. That's the first step to a cure, <laughs> it's it's the first step. admitting it and accepting it's the problem. It's the first okay. step, that's right. And so, you know, credit unions are this great profession that really allowed me to blend my expertise in the legal uh, world with really a, a passion for serving people and for helping people. And that's really what took me through my career from serving them, working for a trade association, and then uh, having the good fortune to be appointed for the NCUA board to serve as their regulator. Gonna, first couple of times we're going to keep NCUA and, and say sure. National Credit National Union. National Credit Union Administration, which is the independent federal regulator for credit unions. Sort of a sister agency to the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, the FDIC. Right. right. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, Patty? Again, mm -hmm. same thing. Where, where do you come from? What led you to getting involved with credit Well, uh, I was born in New York and came to Virginia many years ago um, and have been worked. <laughs> not, leave that it at that. not that Leave that at that. <laughs> um, but I have been working for nonprofits for a long time, and it was a sort of a, a natural affinity for um, singing the praises of a good a group like credit unions that made it an easy fit for me in terms of joining the group seven years ago and the group being the national association of federal credit unions mm -hmm. um, and there's so many good things to say about credit unions that really it makes it a very easy job um, because we basically touch so many aspects either for business owners or for individual members um, that can reap the rewards of the not-for-profit, member-focused credit union. And that's the Association of, Feder uh, of Federal Credit Unions is like a lobby for federal credit it's unions. It's a trade association, and we really help shape um, the laws and regulations. Uh, that's why I said for, lobby. Yeah, the, uh, <laughs> um, that, that regulate federal credit unions because okay. in a better uh, atmosphere and climate for them, then that helps them um, serve their members better. So that's really our goal is to ultimately help um, all the members that the credit okay. unions serve. Okay. Now I don't want, I'm so tempted to get into something else as a, because of who I am, but that part of your job is defending uh, credit unions from banks and because banks would like to see, I assume, credit unions which they see as competition, they would like to see laws that are maybe a little more restrictive there, a little less restrictive on themselves perhaps. Well, perhaps. I think credit unions as, as a rule generally um, might get, um, uh, I think like any other industry, there's always someone who's on the other side of the equation, but I think by and large credit unions are um, so positive for the industry right. and for the landscape that we try and make sure that people are aware of all the benefits that they bring to the financial landscape and make sure that uh, people know how to uh, access them and to use them to the best of their abilities. We're going to come back to you because I think you've got some interesting data to tell us about credit unions mm -hmm. and how they work. This, this young fellow down here on the end, Mario <laughs> Mejia. Mario, you are the uh, business development person at the mm -hmm. uh, uh, Department of Interior Credit Union, mm -hmm. and, and is business so bad you have to develop it, or what's, what's going on over there? But well, where, where do you come from, and what brought you to what you do, good sir? I hail from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Oh my goodness! And uh, <laughs> and what brought my what actually brought or overall when I found the credit union industry, I was competing against it um, in the earlier part of my. Um, uh, my employment with traditional banks. But I found very early that there really was no competition between <laughs> the traditional world, uh, banking world, and the credit union world. Um, starting growing, growing up, I actually had my first uh, warm and fuzzy feeling with uh, an introduction to finances through a credit union. Um, I was actually working very young. This was, at, this was at Giant Food. And when I was looking to establish credit, when, when no one else in, in the community would take me, the, uh, the credit union did through, the, through, uh, through Giant at the time. Giant Food employees had a credit union? Mm, it was, at first it was Ahold, and then it, now it's Market, Market Federal. Ah, Apple and now Market yeah. Federal, okay. Oh. So I've, I've been, been a hard charger ever since, once I had this opportunity to, uh, to build, the, the build the credit union. And, and he's uh, not exaggerating. He's <laughs> telling the truth on that one. I, yeah. I, to I, build I it up. I can support him on that one. <laughs> Uh, the mission of credit unions, uh, Gigi, it's 
It is different from the mission of banks, is it not? It's very different. It's, uh, credit unions are, as I mentioned, uh, not-for-profit financial cooperatives, and their whole mission is really to focus on people and people's financial lives and helping improve people's financial lives. You know, meeting people where they are in life financially and helping them get through whatever that might be. Well, so, and, and the people you're talking about are their members that's exactly and right. owners. That's exactly right. So from it's a, a different animal. It's not only a different mission, but it's also very much a different governance system right. because um, a board of a, of a credit union is, is run by the members. They are elected right. by the members and they're a volunteer board of directors. And the profits, if you will, of a credit union go back to the members. So members get um, better rates on their savings, lower rates on their car loans. It's very different from a stock ownership type of um, corporation uh, like many other right. financial institutions are because those profits go to the stockholders. They don't get reinvested necessarily back into serving their members. And CEOs members. who are paid outrageous sums of money and that, that kind of thing. Yeah, And members get to, there's also the democratic part of it that members get to vote for the right. board, of board of directors. Right. So, you know, it's a very different model than other financial institutions. And, and I would argue very focused on what the member needs because it is, it is driven by the members. Now, and you're uh, executive director of the National Credit Union Foundation. What mm -hmm. is the foundation, if I may ask? So the National Credit Union Foundation is the philanthropic and uh, charitable arm of the credit union system within the United States. You not only do all that good for your membership, but you do good for outside the membership? Well, well, what we try to do is we try to improve people's financial lives through credit unions. That's our yeah. mission. And we don't touch consumers directly, but what we try to do is provide credit unions a variety of different resources and tools and information to really help them um, serve their members and meet those financial education needs. Okay. We also are the point entity for disaster relief within the credit union system. So when disaster relief disaster within the credit relief. union system happened. In the context, right, in the context of um, hurricanes Katrina and Rita, the Colorado oh, floods, oh. when credit union people are affected by those disasters, other credit union people around the country want to help. And our foundation serves as an entity for collecting donations from credit union people oh, wow. to other credit union people to help them during those those, you, those disasters. You don't find that in banks, you know? Excuse me? You don't find that in banks, you know? Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> okay. And you were for a period of seven years, did you tell me? About seven and a half on years. On the board yeah. of the uh, seven and a half, or was it seven and it seven, twelve? Seven, That's okay. right. There you go. <laughs> I mean, I want to get this we'll right. We'll just say seven. We'll just say seven. Let's make it easy. <laughs> Not like my granddaughter. I am seven and three quarters now. Uh, um, National Credit Union Administration. Very important. It's the regulatory body that oversees credit unions. Uh, and um, you were one of three board members. Uh, these are presidential appointees. This is, this is a big deal, folks. So she was uh, on a, a, a very prestigious position at the leadership of the credit union uh, movement. Was that interesting, fun? It was very interesting. Uh, you know, very honored to be appointed by a uh, president, confirmed by the Senate. You know, that, that is a big, big deal. But you Go know, ahead, you can say his name. But it's President Bush at the time. And yep. this was the, 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 the younger, the more evil, I mean, the, the younger, younger, younger Bush. The sorry, younger I'm Bush. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the NCA board is interesting in that um, whoever's in the White House, whatever party, that's the majority of the board. And so at the time, um, they needed to fill a Democratic slot. And so I was a Democrat who was on uh, that board. Your dad time. wouldn't have had it any other way. He wouldn't have had it any other <laughs> way. My goodness, that's right. Okay, but, so, and, but that's the way it works. The president, uh, you cannot have more than two of the three from one party. That's exactly right. Okay, that's exactly that's, right. So you and keep some other voice in there. There's that part of it. And then there's also in the Federal Credit Union Act, a provision that says only one board member can have previous credit union experience. And I was also that board member because I had served in a variety of capacities within the credit union system. So you had an advantage over the other two. You knew something about it. Well, um, I certainly knew a lot about credit unions. And it was very important uh, during a time when our country went through uh, the recession, frankly. And credit unions were challenged by an economic climate that um, was really difficult to to go through. Uh, saying that credit unions, credit unions really weathered that storm very well. I want to come back to that. Sure, We're going to come of back course, to that because that's, that's an important mm -hmm. point and uh, I think it's an issue that will come up there, the notion of, uh, of safety Absolutely. of being a part of a, a credit union as opposed to a, one of those fine banking institutions that we know so much about. Patty, would you outline us briefly, you get the tough question, you get the roots 
of, of credit unions. A relatively new phenomenon, when I say relatively new, in a world that goes back, a um, civilized world that goes back, you know, you know a few thousand years. Um, sort of the first creation, which was in Europe somewhere, and then the beginnings in the United States as an alternative to, to, to banks. Well, actually, and briefly, we, we know yes, we're, this is not I a will, treatise. You will not get a degree out of this. I will give think. you the cliff note version. Okay. Uh, there, you, there you go. Uh, well, the genesis of credit unions actually came out of Germany um, from guild workers, and they started about in 1850. And uh, Ah, guild workers. So yeah. yeah, which was a natural, actually, um, group because they were collaborating and cooperative right. um, to help address their needs at the time. And then that uh, evolved and was brought over uh, by Mr. Desjardins over to Montreal, actually, in he North America. He sounds terribly French. He is, and he was actually a court reporter. Um, and so he started uh, credit unions in North America in Montreal. Montreal, as they like to say, and uh, Canada, okay. eventually he also helped uh, bring the movement to Manchester, New Hampshire, ah. and um, the initial... Now we're talking in the mid-1800s? Uh, no, in Manchester it became, it was 1909. Oh, I'm sorry, 1909. Okay, we're and there, right? um, what was the St. Mary's group uh, was the first cooperative, and... In New Hampshire? Yes. And there's what a... What state was the first state to pass a law creating credit unions? Oh, it, would, it would be uh, New Hampshire. The, uh, the Massachusetts group had the, the first laws, but uh, in New they Hampshire... They had the first laws in the People's Republic of Massachusetts. That's right. Okay. Uh, and, uh, but New Hampshire started the group, and um, that's where the America's Credit Union Museum is today okay. that, that celebrates Well, Massachusetts and New, New Hampshire, they're, both, they're you know, right yes. there side by side. You know. Um, and so um, they have, a, a, I think, a very rich history uh, in terms of the fact that the collaborative spirit is actually what brought them forth and what continues to bring them now, great success. In Massachusetts and New Hampshire, was, was this, were these rural people? Was like a, a, a rural co-op or what kinds of people uh, started the credit union? Um, they were actually uh, different groups of people. It was, fr I believe it was Franco-American um, uh, Catholics that uh, Desjardins first worked with um, okay. to create the group and okay. it eventually evolved to help the, the uh, community on a larger scale so okay. it represented I think a little bit larger group by the time it became better established that but at the end of it and and at the bedrock of it was the cooperative spirit which was um, and continues to be um, you know the infrastructure of all credit unions today and then we had the big breakthrough in 1934, right? That's correct. Um, and and the element behind that is really, you know, that was coming on the heels of the Great Depression. But that right, always in it. Is right, okay. And um, to help build confidence once again in the financial um, system, and to help create something that would help people build thrift, is how credit unions came to be instituted. Uh, by President Roosevelt, and um, so that stands sort of as a testament, really, to a great um, okay. building bedrock for credit unions today. But my, my, my point still is it's, that that was the, the bedrock for 1934 for the federal credit unions, still relatively young as, as an institution as compared to those, what, what do you, you call those other fellow, you call those other institutions, oh, banks, yes, I, I'd forgotten the, forgotten the name. Uh, Mario, what services do uh, you offer at the Department of Interior Federal Credit Union? Uh, and I guess other federal credit unions would do the same, but mm -hmm. what, what kinds of services do you offer uh, and are they pretty similar to banks or what would you say? Well, we offer a full suite of services. So, you know, within our walls you'll find banking, investments, loans, insurance. You say banking. Well, savings, deposits, checking, checking, checking savings, loans, insurance. Um, what kind of loans? Uh, loans, car loans, home loans, full suite, full suite of uh, services. Refinance your mortgages, the whole nine. So everything that you can find at a traditional bank, you'll find within the walls of a credit union. So if I want to set up my, uh, uh, you know, a stock brokerage, uh, I would come and get 
You can come to us. Come to you and, and borrow mm-hmm. a couple billion so I can get invested heavily in the stock. Well, you could borrow that from me. We could work something out. <laughs> well, my point is, how would you compare in terms of services you offer with the uh, the uh, uh, Bank of Virginia or the mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. First National Bank? the bank down the street. What, what I find that credit unions are most known for, not necessarily even the Department of Interior Federal Credit Union, is um, higher deposits and then the lower interest rates. Uh, you find that... But let me go back. The, do you get additional kinds of services that are bank or do you offer pretty much the same? Pretty service? much the same. Okay. Now we're, going to, we're going to get into the benefits uh, in, in, in just a few minutes. Um, I guess I don't then have to join both a credit union and, a, and, and put my money in a bank. If I'm associated with a credit union, I don't need that other, those other folks. <laughs> you can, everything that you need, you can find with us. Okay, well that, that was really a question. So you can take care of all my family needs, mm-hmm. okay. Making credit union, credit union special, and, and by the way, I didn't, it's not an accident, a total accident we're having this program. Somebody came by the farmer's market and asked if, you know, had we ever talked about credit unions on the program? I said, no. I have a long relationship with the Lafayette Federal Credit Union, which serves the United States Agency for International Development, I guess the Export Bank, Import Bank, the Small Business Administration, and I'm probably forgetting one small agency or another one. And I served for a while on the credit committee of the, uh, of the uh, Lafayette Federal Credit Union. And our job was to review certain size loan applications. If they're minimal personal loans, that kind of thing, the staff would approve them. But if they were larger loans or loans from a, custo- a, a member who may have had some credit difficulties, some issues in the past, it came to us, the credit committee. And it was a fascinating experience because our, we had this combined uh, job, which is we obviously wanted our credit union, where we all had our money tied up, to do well. But we wanted to take care of our coworkers, in, in fact. And it was, it was a fascinating experience. I was on there for two or three years, and it gave me a really good feel for, for credit unions and how, how they can work without having that being driven by some mm-hmm. kind of larger profit motive. We were driven by the fact that it was an institution that served all of our best interests. Uh, on the, and sometimes you couldn't give somebody a loan because it looked like they just wouldn't be in a condition to repay it, and that you know we, we couldn't do that either. Hmm. But interesting balance, and it, it, it did. It made, made you feel good about credit unions. Uh, can everybody join a credit union, GD? That is, do I have to be a member of the, uh, a foreign service officer, or do I have to be a, a Department of Interior a civil servant, or what if I'm just a, uh, a person who lives in the community of Reston, for example? Sure. So under, um, under the Federal Credit Union Act, there is something called a field of membership and each credit union has a distinctive field of membership but that can be pretty broad so you can have credit unions that are community-based credit unions Reston for example we have a Reston Association our homeowners association they could and it's you know we've got 60,000 people in the community got 25,000 members of the association could they start a credit union for their membership? Um, so that's a loaded question. The answer technically is I mean, is, whether they want to yes. or not is another question, right? The answer, <laughs> the answer is yes. Um, there's also, there are resources out there. There's one called asmarterchoice.org that people or associations can go to and take a look of where they are and what credit unions are around them that, that they are eligible uh, that to join. Exist. That already exist, exactly. <clears throat> okay. And so these fields of membership, if you will, can be geographical, they can be because you worked at a particular agency or a right. particular company. Um, they vary, but for the most part, pretty much anybody who wants to join a credit union can find a credit union to join. How, what would, you, how, how, what would be the kind of minimal base you would need to start a new credit union? So new credit unions this day and age are, are you're able to start them, but because members expect, think of how you do your, your business transactions, your financial transactions, you know, we expect kind of the sun, the moon, and the stars. We want branches, we want mobile technology, we want remote deposit capture, the machine and the, we, yeah, want the corners, we want the internet, we want bill pay. Yeah. So for, to think of a new institution starting, they need a significant amount of capital to get going and they need a significant amount of support normally from a sponsoring organization. It certainly can be done, and um, the National Credit Union Administration has an office devoted to chartering new credit unions. I asked, I asked this question, in fact, because uh-huh. I went to your website. Right. And you know, you got all those little headings there. 
My former website. Remember, your former I'm no website. longer a board beg member. Your, beg your pardon. <laughs> beg your pardon. But one of the things it says there, how you can start your own credit union. That's exactly right. <laughs> That's, That's exactly right. Says, wow. Yeah. It's that kind of operation. I could go start my own? Yes. The, the answer is, <laughs> is yes. And we'd like to see, uh, we generally, within the credit union system, I think we'd like to see more credit unions started. Sure. Yeah. Sure. And I, I think of our homeowners association uh, as, as an instance, because in fact it has a potentially, you know, 25,000 families uh, membership mm -hmm. to start with in a fairly uh, solid income community, et cetera, sure. a fair stability. Sure. So maybe they would have a basis. Whereas if I wanted to start a credit union on my row of townhouses, that might be, a, might be more challenging. True. To have True. the capital base, but, uh, but knowing this area, you know there are a lot of credit unions that have fields of membership which overlap, and probably finding a credit union that's already in existence that has that suite of services is probably a better, probably a yeah. better bet. And I think this is true of credit unions in general. I think it's true of Lafayette. Of course, it's true of Lafayette. I know it's true. My uh, kids, for example, are eligible to be members, although they're not uh, em employees of any of these government agencies. Exactly. So that field they, of membership includes. Yeah. Um, immediate family members. Yeah. Um, you my know, son my and his wife got their uh, bought a, a, a loan from uh, yep. Lafayette f to buy their house. Exactly. And they got right. their mortgage from uh, Lafayette. Exactly. Right. Okay, so I mean, it really is. It has that. It has that really good feel. Um, what are some of the other important distinctions between credit unions and banks? In fact, if I could, um, I would like to say that the distinction for credit unions is almost Main Street versus Wall Street. They are. Um, your neighborhood resource and to uh, help the communities at large, whatever the field of membership may be, uh, to help access the best resources they can to help their financial needs. And that really is a, is a point of pride for a lot of credit unions. And earlier you mentioned the difference between credit unions and banks. And I think our concern uh, from the National Association of Federal Credit Unions is that um, credit unions not be over-regulated uh, and not swept into a lot of um, more regulation and legislation that's intended for the larger entities. And uh, for example, in the Great Recession, um, you know, we were not responsible for the financial crisis and yet there's a lot of over-regulation now that's going on that's um, burdening some of the credit unions. And so from our perspective, the Trade Association, we try to make sure that uh, we champion the benefits of credit unions so that they can continue to serve their members um, to the best of their ability. Hmm. I, I guess that, that gives me pause. I don't know. I'm not necessarily confident to ask the most important questions because it doesn't seem to me that the credit union movement was the source of the difficulty. They didn't have these incredibly complex, highfalutin uh, uh, financial mechanisms, these Exactly. Packaging of these mortgage packages exactly. uh, from every mortgage that anybody had ever gotten they, kind of thing. They didn't. And I, I think a couple of things that's important to remember, you know, um, credit unions uh, oftentimes are erroneously viewed as sort of mom and pop organizations. You know, credit unions these days are sophisticated financial institutions that provide a suite of services comparable to their brethren in other parts of the financial services sector. Their accounts are insured, just like the FDIC insures. Important point you know, banks, the NCUA insures your account at Lafayette Federal Credit Union, which is an important message for consumers that essentially you can get the products and services you need from a cooperatively owned financial institution where your deposits are insured, similar to a bank, um, and you have access to your accounts through a variety of cooperative shared branch networks where credit union, right. I as a credit union member can go to a Lafayette Federal Credit Union ATM, and my credit union right. talks to your credit union, right. but I can get my business right. done Good. because that's point. where I happen to be on a Saturday morning. So I think it's important for consumers to know that that availability and that breadth of what credit unions are and what they do really does exist, and they should check them out if they haven't done so you're, in a while. You're, you're insured, your accounts, your share accounts yes. are insured. To the, same, to the same limit. Is it, it's $250,000 currently. Is that the, that's the same as the FDIC that's for, the, uh, for the banking system. That's correct. So, you're, you're covered, and uh, that's, a, that's, a, that's a very, very important point. Um, are there important distinctions between credit unions and banks? I think that the main one is 
it's your institution. You're a member. You're a uh, you're, an, you're an yeah. owner. You're an owner. You have a vote in how it's They mine. exist to provide yeah. a service to you. Yeah. And, and you have a vote in how it's run. I mean, that right. is key. I mean, imagine walking yeah. into any other business where you're the boss. Yeah. <laughs> and, they're, and they're fairly solid. I think I did. I ask one of you earlier the the, the, net, the assets of the credit union movement in the United States are. It's over one trillion. Over one trillion dollars. Over uh, I think it's ninety six or ninety eight million, million members. Over hundred million members. We just it's celebrated. Now over that's right. We yeah. just yeah. celebrated yeah. this summer the over a hundred million members, and that's a big deal. Yeah, it's um, a very big deal. Yeah, it's a big deal. John, uh, something that we do personally at our credit union, when I, when I go out and I'm in the field speaking to our, of our um, select employee groups, that question always comes up. You know, what's the difference between the, you know, the banks and the credit union? Sure. What's the difference? You know, what do you all do to, uh, to do that? One thing that I always usually try to hit the, the nail on the head about is, um, you know, within, within having the, you know, encompassing all things with the financial institution, you know, the lower rates, higher deposits. One thing that we do is promotions on top of those lower rates and higher deposits. So we can, we can create things that may not even be within our system or a service that we don't actually even have um, for the benefit of our, of our, um, our, um, our members. Okay. You know, we've, we've talked prior, you know, our, my office is right around the corner from here, so we're actually in the Reston area. Uh, in the U.S. Geological Survey building. U.S. Geological Survey is the yep. Department of Interior Federal Credit Union, mm -hmm. so there. But person yep. off the street can't come in there and be a member. They, they can use you, you know what? They actually could. One of the ways, we were speaking of eligibility earlier, one of the ways um, to be a part of, just for example, our credit union, is by uh, volunteering for the, any, any of the bureaus of the Department of Interior. So a national park, you know, if you wanted to go to the Lincoln Monument or if you wanted to go to uh, so if you the World War II. the National Park Service? Yeah, if you volunteer, because see, mind you, with the departments here, we're very big on volunteers. You know, they have, okay. I believe it's as of right now, it's 220, 220,000 volunteers. You know, there are 70,000. I am one. Um, in, oh, great. I am one. So I'm, to on be, the board, I'm, I'm on the board of the, uh, the Friends of Wolf Trap. Oh, great, yeah. yeah. With the National Park Service. Yeah, so, so you could, if, you've, if you're volunteering out there, then why not get that extra motivation to, that you may possibly not have an avenue to? But see, I'm with Lafayette Federal Credit Union. I suspect they're probably far better than the Department of Interior. <laughs> well, you, I'd, oh, oh. I'd, I'd love to jump in there <laughs> and go, and go <laughs> fist, 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 fist. <laughs> <laughs> But seriously, let's look at the benefits. Uh, Patty, I think you got a couple of charts you, you want yes. to show us. That can, let's get a little more specific about this if, in case people think that I'm just funning them here. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's uh, take a look at a couple of the charts Absolutely. you were kind enough to bring to us today. Yeah, this first slide actually sort of gives you a snapshot of just the different products and services that credit unions offer and the advantage that people have in getting either their accounts at credit unions or securing loans at credit unions. And what you see here is a snapshot of the types of advantages in terms of interest rates that they offer. So on, what you're suggesting there is on the left that you can get a vehicle loan for a credit union at sort of an average of 28% less better. in terms of interest rate exactly. than you exactly. would at a commercial bank. For exactly. Example. Wow. And, and then what's next there on And that unsecured loans and credit card loans. And then you have real estate loans. And um, Interesting. So... A mortgage you could get for like 3% less than you might pay at exactly. a, a, a commercial bank. Exactly. And what are those giant things to the, the right? The giant things are actually the share accounts and your checking accounts um, and the interest rates that they offer uh, members. What are those numbers? 27% yes. better and 32%? Exactly, exactly. That's exactly uh, almost a third better than banks uh, across the board on those two types of accounts. And it's, so it comes as no surprise that, I mean, not only based on our own surveys, but on a lot of the general consumer surveys like bank rate and um, consumers report, uh, oftentimes credit unions top the list on the type of financial institution that offers the most competitive and advantageous interest rate for- Those aren't competitive, those are advantageous. Yeah. <laughs> what we're looking at there is advantageous. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> I mean, I'm kind of slow on the uptake on that, but I, I can figure that one out. Yeah, yeah, big bar is good news. Uh, so, um, yeah. Uh, yeah, because that starts to beg the question, why the devil would you be, uh, why, would, why would you go to a bank? Exactly That's a good question. Exactly That's a good question. <laughs> okay, remember those numbers, folks. Those are very important numbers. If you borrow from the credit union, you get loans at a, a lower rate. You pay less for, your, uh, less for the, getting your loans at a credit union than you do at a bank. 
And if you keep your money in the credit union, you get paid higher interest. And not just a little bit higher interest, substantially higher. What's the other chart you were going to show us, Patty? Um, the other chart goes to, um, remember, business loans. Oftentimes, credit unions are a great resource for small business owners. And um, Now, you're not keeping General Motors or, or IBM afloat. These, these, are, are these are qualified, classified as small business loans for your members. Okay. That, so that this, is this correct. Small business loans. That is correct. And here. I think the... The telling uh, issue here is uh, the consistency of availability of, of funds for credit union members. Even at the height of the financial crisis, you'll notice that credit union lending okay, was let's, consistent. Okay, let's orient our viewers a little bit. This chart shows you from 2007 to basically to today, from left to right, That's correct. correct. And, okay. and what it shows is a consistent level of lending for uh, credit union members um, who, at you know, could be expanding their businesses, perhaps creating jobs. The blue and lines are the level of lending of credit unions correct. versus the, uh, the, is that gold or brown there that's uh, the banks? Correct. Wow. So they, there's a period there of the financial crisis, 2008, 9 down, uh, up until 2012. They're below the line. What does that mean? Not good. <laughs> 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 not good. It means that tighten, they tightened credit to the point where they were not making funds available. And basically, um, that's where credit unions m maintained a steady presence with their members and made sure that they had funding that was available that would help promote job growth and help uh, keep our economy uh, moving. Now, and, and let me understand this. And I don't fully understand it, but this is this non-lending or, or, or seeming to actually suck money out of the system as opposed to lending if I'm reading below the line correctly happens at a time when the Federal Reserve was practicing its uh, what did they call the policy uh, quantitative easing quantitative easing and quantitative easing what it meant was that they were pushing hundreds of billions of dollars into the financial system at basically zero interest for banks who were borrowing from them where did I want to know where that money went? And this obviously this chart doesn't tell me. We all, this is probably not a fair question, but my God, it drives me crazy. Uh, the Federal Reserve of the United States was creating money uh, at, at rates of like 200 billion a quarter or something like that from time to time, and lending it out to the financial system for, as I understand it, up zero percent to maybe 0 0.3 percent, mm. and they didn't lend. Amazing. But credit unions did, and they were lending to people who wanted to start businesses, and we still do, and you still have more percentage-wise available. And I think that goes to the greater point, which is the value of credit unions overall on the financial landscape. Because I think you can see, in general, that they present a very advantageous uh, financial resource uh, for uh, the community, and that they present a, a wonderful competitive level of interest rate for the people who are interested in either taking out loans <coughs> or saving money, and certainly those that are interested in developing their small businesses. Well, that, this is fascinating because I don't know if you realize this or not, and I can't get a handle on it quantitatively, but one of the things we've learned in recent years in Reston is that there is a huge number of home-operated, home-based small businesses in this community. Mm -hmm. And when I say huge number, I think it numbers in the low thousands. Mm. Mm. There, there are that many small businesses. And these are all folks who presumably would be just the kind of people who might borrow from a credit union. And from the, looking at this, they would be well advised to borrow from the credit union. Mm. One, because it's available, money is available when the banks have you know, put the squeeze on, on money, especially to new and unknown mm -hmm. borrowers for business. One, and two, because they get, a, they get an interest rate break. Why the devil would they be borrowing from a bank? Now, truth, truth, and not having said that, nor do I have a clue who they really are borrowing from. So they maybe already have figured this out. Maybe they are borrowing from credit unions. I, hope, I certainly hope that's the case. Well, even the Small Business Administration, they did a study in 2011, and they found that credit unions were filling a, a necessary void on the landscape in terms of small business loans. So um, okay. that should be a point of 
confidence and reassurance That's for interesting. You a know, lot when I entered people. into this, this this deal of having this program and talking to you guys, I really had no idea of that sort of that dimension of, of credit well, unions. And, and business loans were really a key part of credit unions when they were chartered back in 1934, because you oh, had okay. you had the depression and you had people who wanted to come together to co cooperatively to work and to produce right. things. And so, this idea of really fostering right. small business enterprises to improve the economic health of the community is really fundamental to what credit unions really started out with in, in 1934. And that continues certainly today. So when the economy is at the low ebb, you've got something that is still operating as an energy right. for growth, as a, 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 a stimulus for growth, in fact. Mm. Last thing, what got you through the, the tough times of the, uh, of the financial crisis? Because obviously the, the, the credit unions took a hit too. What, was it because you were insured or you could help each other in the industry? How did you get through the crisis? So, speaking as a former regulator, I think it's because credit unions really focused on their lending, not only in lending in terms of um, sort of data analytics, but also on character. They really stuck to the, the principles of solid lending and really knowing their member, knowing how the money was going to be used, and really following that. I don't want to say that that was conservative necessarily, but it was really good credit practices and knowing who you were lending to and what that person that was, going, was going to do with the money. Makes a tremendous difference. Yeah, and that, I think that you helped many them. of them. Um, you know, that's not to say that we had significant parts of the country that were affected by the financial crisis simply because of the geography. Right. So, you know, California, the sand states, Florida simply got hit very hard because of the way the recession happened. Well, and people happened. who you were members, who were members or people who related to your members or served by your members, they were hit, so your members were indirectly hit, That's exactly hit, of right. Course, that's exactly obviously. right. We're about to wrap up here. Who's got one last thing they want to tell me about credit unions that I wasn't smart enough to ask about? Well, credit unions are, have a great prudent business model, and they're a great resource. So um, you should check out culookup.com and see if you can join if you're not what a member. culookup.com. Letter C, letter U, lookup.com. Look up. And <laughs> see if you can join. There's Find also, a credit union to join. Yeah, there's also another website called a smarterchoice.org. Um, d does the same thing in terms of helping people find a credit union. You know, credit unions are all about community. They're all about the people who own them. And I think that's, that's the point that consumers should know, that if you're looking for a financial institution that's all about your interest, that credit union is the place to go. It's funny mm -hmm. you should say that because that, that's what Rustin is all about, community sense of it. Thank you all for coming and joining us tonight. Thank you, young fellow down on the end, you, for making this happen. <laughs> in, in my, my fact, pleasure. Mario Thank you. a great deal of credit and for the good parts of the program that they're, they're, they're due to Mario. And thank you, uh, Gigi, and thank you, Patty, for joining us. Thank you and for having us. Thank, thank you, John. Thank you for what the uh, credit union movement does for, does for our folks. I told you we got by the elections and we had some really good news for you tonight, <laughs> and we did. We had these people doing some really great work. Uh, well, I want to thank them, thank uh, Dan, uh, Ruben, and Steve, uh, the Comcastics, as I call them, who helped uh, bring this program to you. But most of all, thank you, our viewers, for sharing some of your time with us tonight. I hope it was useful, and I hope you uh, will go right out. If you're not already a member of a credit union, go right out and become a member. They've given you the clues on how you can do it. Uh, National Credit Union Administration website's another place to go. You trying to get one last shot in, Mari? Got to be quick. One last, one last shot. The tapping on community, if they're out there volunteering, we are here in the in the rest community, volunteer, and we can, we'll, be, we'll find them a home with Department us. Department of Interior Federal Credit Union uh, for volunteers who serve the Interior Department located within the building at the U.S. Geological Survey mm -hmm. right here in Reston. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you, guys, you. so Thank much. You as well. This is John Lovis saying good night for my guests and good night for Reston Impact. We'll see you next time.